Hello and welcome to the Deception Tips Podcast, where you will learn amazing cues to detect deceit that will help you read people like never before. I'm your host, Spencer Kaufman. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Deception Tip episode number 77. You've been listening for a long time. Thank you for that. We've got a great episode in store for you today, something we have never talked about before. Hard to believe it. But in 77 episodes, we haven't talked about this topic, so you're in for a real treat. That also doesn't mean you don't need to listen to the past episodes, because those episodes will build on your knowledge in this and in detecting deception in general. Therefore, before we dive into today, let's recap last week's episode of Covering the Mouth. That was episode number 76. You can also check out the video that goes along with that and if you're a reader take a look at the deception tips revised and expanded edition tip number 76 so you can kind of get a little bit more information on it but we talked about how liars will unconsciously cover their mouth before they're telling a lie or even maybe after they're telling the lie because they are unconsciously trying to prevent that lie from getting out Remember, there is a huge battle going on between the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. And also remember, I talk about these like it's two separate minds, but it's the same brain. It's exactly like you can have a different mindset. You know, and if you look at it through this mindset, it may make sense. But if you look at it with this mindset, you may not understand it. So these are two different mindsets. There's the conscious and the unconscious. It's mentalities. It's states of mind that are going on in the background of your brain. All right, so the conscious wants to get away with that lie. Remember, it is pushing to cover up anything, to get away with whatever it can, to avoid pain, maximize pleasure. That's your conscious. The unconscious is trying so hard to put the truth in front of everybody. It wants the truth to be known. It wants the truth to be out. Because the unconscious is by definition unconscious, it's not active. It's not, I mean, it's active. It's definitely active, but it's not on the front. It's not conscious. It's not being pushed forward right away. It is working behind the scenes subtly, kind of passive aggressively in the shadows to leak certain signs of truthful behavior. Now, these are all of the deception tips that you are paying attention to and learning. These are the unconscious things, whether it's verbal communication, whether it is body language, nonverbal, etc. These are unconscious body language deception tips that you are learning to read that are coming out, and covering the mouth is one of them. If you remember, we've talked about this once before. Well, other than last week, we've talked about it before, way back in episode number 45, when we discussed hushing the lips, how liars may be kind of shushing themselves with their fingers. Remember how it looks? They kind of maybe have one or both fingers over their lips with their thumbs under their chin. It could also take the form of the thinking man posture, where they maybe have a couple of fingers. It could be the index finger and the middle finger of one hand right over their lips. could be index fingers from both hands etc. And the covering of the mouth is going to be like a clasped hand, like in the movies where you see somebody is about to speak and someone reaches around and grabs them, or when someone's kidnapping someone, they cover their mouth right away. It's that clasping of the mouth. And you'll see that when a liar isn't really sure about what they want to say. They're trying to hold back or preventing themselves from telling that lie, unconsciously, of course. So that's that. Hopefully you have a pretty good idea of what it looks like. You've no doubt seen it. Hopefully my little visuals or descriptions have helped you with that. Moving on to today's episode, though, we've got, like I said, a very special episode today because we are talking about a personality type in general. That's right. We're going to talk about introverted people and how they respond differently to confrontation and therefore when you're using a lot of these tactics if it's an introverted person 
you may get some different responses or some things that do not quite fit the mold that we've been talking about throughout all of these deception tips. Because in these deception tips, we've been talking about quote unquote normal people. Now, introverted people are normal and extroverted people are normal. But now we're talking about the ends of the spectrum. So the outliers, the highly introverted. So here it is, deception tip number 77. Rather than becoming confrontational, introverted people show disagreement by controlling a different, self-invented situation. Here it is again, deception tip number 77. Rather than becoming confrontational, introverted people show disagreement by controlling a different, self-invented situation. All right, so this is very interesting in that when an introverted person is confronted, they don't like that. Therefore, if they want to have some control, they may invent something in that situation to exert their control to help them feel more comfortable in that environment and in that situation. We've talked a little bit about that before. Before we get into that, though, I really want to cover one thing because it might have kind of put some of you on edge. The fact that I said normal. Okay, there are introverted people, there are extroverted people. Everybody is pretty much introverted or extroverted. They have tendencies one way or the other. That is normal. That's very normal. Now, there are other people and they're normal too. I'm saying normal based on the majority of people. If you say, all right, we're going to total up everybody in the world, the majority, 80% of the population has blue eyes. This is false, by the way. If you say that 80% of the population has blue eyes, that it's been tallied up, then it would be normal to have blue eyes based on the situation and environment of everybody around them. So when I say normal, I'm not saying wrong or something like that. I'm saying it is normal in that most people are introverted or extroverted. They have tendencies. Therefore, when you get someone who is very, very introverted, that's what I'm referring to here. Or on the opposite side, if they're very, very extroverted. But that's something we're not going to talk about because usually very, very extroverted people you can handle them the same way as with all of these other tips that we've been talking about. But very, very introverted people are not going to handle the confrontation the same as everybody else. Okay, that's established. Now, we're going to talk more about how they will show this disagreement because they don't want the confrontation. They don't like that. So they're going to kind of be a little bit passive-aggressive with their disagreement. And how they do that is different than other people and how they exert that disagreement. So we're going to talk a lot more about it coming up right after this. Not only can you listen to these deception tips, you can also watch a quick video explaining each one. Subscribe to the Body Language YouTube channel today. Welcome back to Deception Tip episode number 77, where we are talking about highly introverted people and how they will show the disagreement compared to other people because it's going to be different. Introverted people do not like that confrontation. So confrontation that we're talking about when it comes to detecting deception and reading people, this is being questioned or being challenged. It's not being questioned in uh, where were you on this day or what is this or tell me more about this that happened or tell me your story. It is the confrontational question, the direct question, where you are saying that you're not believing part of their story and you're challenging that story, kind of looking for more information on it. You're doubtful. You're doubting what they're saying and you're posing that as questions to further get to the truth and establish it. They don't like that type of confrontation. So to combat that, they're going to do things to help them be put more at ease with the situation around them and their environment. What are some of the things that they may do? Well, we have talked about this a little bit, how people will bring elements of home or elements from other locations where they were comfortable to a new environment in an effort to become more comfortable. We've talked about comfort gestures or comforting gestures. 
Things like folding the arms way back in episode one, the stuff of locking ankles, crossing legs, kind of giving people, giving themselves a hug as a comfort gesture. This is more things like if at home, when you're working in your room, you're always tapping your fingers on the knuckle of your other hand. Well, when you're in that stressful situation, that unfamiliar environment, you may tap your fingers on the knuckle of your other hand unconsciously to kind of bring that element of home to that location to help you feel a little bit more at home. That is the thing we're talking about, only it may be done on a bigger level. So they're going to start doing things as a part of their normal routine in their familiar environment. They'll bring them into the new environment and that will help them f become a little bit more familiar with that situation and be a little bit more at ease there. That's the first step. Then when you start showing more conflict and more disagreement, more confronting and questioning, challenging them, stuff like that, they might show this disagreement rather than like an extroverted person who would show this type of confrontation by directly battling you back or by maybe getting mad, having an outburst, challenging you, saying, how dare you? They may be pushing it back on the target. An introverted person may exert control of the situation. They may even invent some type of a situation that they can control, like create their own problem and then solve it to give them that feeling of security and satisfaction, kind of like the illusion of control. In addition, they may also exert control over the target. Simple things like, such as having the target get them a glass of water or saying, I'm hungry, get me something to eat. And they'll do these things to show their power over the target. It's not really showing their power over them because the target knows, everybody else knows who's in control of the situation. This is simply giving the extremely introverted person something that they feel like they have a say in it. So they are making a request, it is being granted, now they are believing that they are controlling the situation. They feel a little bit more in control, like they have a say. It's kind of allowing them to have some input into what's going on in their environment, which will then make them a little bit more at peace, and it will also help them to feel a little bit more relaxed. And when they start to feel a little bit more at peace and relaxed and comfortable with this situation, then as an introverted person, they will start to open up. Because if they are definitely stressed, not relaxed, and everything is wrong, they aren't going to talk at all. Introverted people will not open up if they are not comfortable and they feel like you're, they're cared about or they feel in control. So as soon as they start feeling that, they're going to start talking more. So it is in your benefit, if this is an introverted person, an extremely introverted person, to kind of go along with some of their stuff. Obviously not everything. You're not going to bend over backwards for them because you're the one asking the questions. They're the one who is questionably in trouble. So it's your, you're calling the shots, which means that, you know, you're going to do what you can to make them feel comfortable, to help them be able to answer your questions, etc. But you're not going to bend over backwards for them. I mean, you can if you want, but it might not be that great of an idea. Whereas an extroverted person, they don't need that. They're going to, if they're stressed, it might be good to put them on a little bit more stress because now they're going to be uncomfortable, which maybe will get them to talk so they feel more comfortable because they're extroverted. Extroverted people like the spotlight. They want to talk. They want to be seen. They want that recognition. They're highly extroverted people are borderline narcissistic. Some of them maybe are. But they want that. So they're going to talk to help themselves feel more comfortable. Whereas the introvert, they won't talk at all because talking already makes them uncomfortable. So if they're uncomfortable and they don't like to talk to people because they're introverted, why would they talk more? Because that would make them even more uncomfortable. So the first step is to make them comfortable with the environment and the situation. Then they will be feel like loosening up and talking to open up and come out of their shell a little bit and hopefully give you the answers you need. So I want to thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Deception Tips podcast. I hope that you'll share it with your friends, subscribe to the feed, check out the Deception Tips videos, the blog, and take a look at the books I have available. And as always, tune in next week for a new Deception Tip.